Hi, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs. Most of you know me for my camera reviews and photography tutorials, but like many of you, I also adore coffee. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I brew up at home and when I'm away traveling. My favorite coffee maker isn't an expensive espresso or trendy capsule machine. Pretty much all the coffee I drink outside of cafes is brewed using a simple, compact, human-powered brewer that costs only 30 pounds or dollars. It's the AeroPress. It can be used indoors or out, and in this video I'll share all the tips and tricks I've learned from using one for over the best part of 10 years. The AeroPress is a very simple but highly effective brewing machine, and since its launch it's gained an enormous following and even a world championship. Search for AeroPress tutorial and you'll discover an enormous variety of techniques and recipes, some extremely simple, others highly involved and precise. Mine falls somewhere in between, certainly more towards the simpler end of the scale, but it also includes a number of tricks that I've learned from baristas and other coffee professionals over the years to enhance the results without making it too complicated. Despite its simplicity, or perhaps because of it, I reckon the AeroPress produces some of the best coffees I've ever tasted. So whether you're upgrading from instant coffee, looking for a travel brewer, or perhaps just refining your own AeroPress recipe, this video is for you. You'll of course need an AeroPress, as well as a sturdy mug, some decent beans, ideally grind them as you need them, and of course some boiling water. I'll go over the actual gear that I use and have popped links for each of them in the description and pinned comment below. All good coffee of course starts with decent quality beans. It sounds obvious when you say it, but yet so many of us fall at the first hurdle by buying pre-ground vacuum packed bags or capsules from supermarkets and other supplies that don't really care that much about the quality. The result is often a bitter, mostly flavorless drink that might provide you with a hit of caffeine, but little actual enjoyment. If you're wincing when you sip your coffee, perhaps it's time for a change. I'd urge you to try some beans from a small, preferably local specialty roaster. They'll source higher quality beans, often develop a fairer relationship with a the farmer, then lightly roast them in smaller batches to retain flavours that are often lost to bitterness on mass-produced dark roasts. These bags are from Horsham Coffee Roaster, just up the road from me, and if you've ever bought me a coffee using my PayPal link, this is normally where I'll spend it. Cheers! If you've been choosing dark roast for strength, it's important to realise that a light roast doesn't mean light in caffeine. You'll still get the hit you enjoy, but with a drink that's packed with flavours. I love the style of beans from places like East Africa, which are often more acidic or have more fruity flavours than the traditional nuttier flavours from Central and South American coffees. But that's the exciting thing about coffee. Once you can actually taste the difference between beans and roasters, you can more easily track down the coffees that you love, whether you're ordering beans or a drink in a cafe. If you'd like to learn more about coffee, its origins, flavours, brewing techniques and the industry as a whole, I can highly recommend The World Atlas of Coffee by James Hoffman, who also has a highly informative and entertaining channel on YouTube, so do check him out at least after you finish this video, of course. All coffee becomes stale over time and loses those delicious flavours that we're after. So for the best results, try to buy bags that actually print their roasting date on them and also try to use them within two to four weeks of that roasting date if you want the optimal results. Now, a lot of bags will also have a best buy or sell by date, but that's really way off in the future, by which time the coffee will not be delivering its best results. Beyond using fresh coffee from a speciality roaster, I reckon the next most important thing you can do for a really good cup of coffee is to grind the beans when you need them. This means buying bags of whole beans and grinding only what you need just before you brew. Again, the longer you leave the ground coffee, the worse it will taste. Even minutes can make a difference. Now think back to those pre-ground bags or capsules where you've no idea when they were roasted or when they were ground. That's why many are over-roasted for a bitter result that masks the aging quality. So you're going to need to get a grinder, but that doesn't mean spending a fortune on a large, expensive and noisy electric model. I use a small hand grinder that's actually designed to slip inside the AeroPress, making it even more portable for travel or hiking. But I'm so happy with the results, I actually use it at home all the time. I use a Porlex Mini that costs around £60 or dollars, but you can spend a lot more or a lot less on a hand grinder. This is a Rhino grinder that's almost as good and is only half the price. The important thing is for the grinder to have conical burrs which crush the beans into a consistent, even powder. It takes me about a minute and a half to hand grind 15 to 20 grams of beans to a consistency that's ideal for the AeroPress and it won't wake everyone up in the process. Try to avoid electric hand grinders which use a spinning metal blade as these produce an inconsistent grind size that plays havoc with your extraction and flavours. These are best used for spices only. 
Next is the AeroPress itself, which I originally chose for travel because I was fed up with drinking crappy coffee at hotel breakfast, or indeed spending money on disappointing coffees at cafes that I wasn't familiar with. In fact, if you're really into budget travel, then brewing your own coffee is a key way to reduce your daily spend, while also providing you with a decent, reliable drink. My AeroPress and Paulette's grinder occupy so little space, I try to take them on almost every trip, even on hikes, using a gas stove to boil the water. The big surprise for me was selecting the AeroPress and hand grinder for portability first, but ending up using them every day at home. And finally, the other major ingredient of a cup of coffee, the water. At home I use a normal electric kettle, but I also have a couple of smaller half-litre travel kettles, which are invaluable if you're staying in hotels that don't have a kettle in the rooms. When I'm in North America, I use a Bonavita mini kettle, which costs around $25. If I'm flying to continental Europe on a short trip, I use a Severin travel kettle, which costs around €20. Euros. These half-litre kettles are small enough to fit in a backpack or a suitcase if you're flying, but if I'm driving between locations, I just take a normal home kettle designed for that country's voltage. Meanwhile, if I'm on a hike or a break during a car journey, I just use a camping gas stove to boil some water, whether in the field or at a picnic bench, say at a service station. You can be creative and a little bit cheeky too. Most service stations or bars before you get on a train actually have food and drink outlets that will provide you with boiling water free of charge if you ask nicely. So I always bring a flask and ask them to fill it up. I've actually used flasks of hot water to brew up an AeroPress underneath the English Channel while travelling on their, the Eurostar and the Eurotunnel trains. The quality of the water will also play a big role in taste. I live in a hard water area, so my best quality bet would be to either use filtered or bottled water, but I can't stand the waste. If you're a regular at a speciality cafe, they may actually let you fill up your water bottle with their own filtered water to take home. Now that's a bit of an extreme measure for me, but it's quite fun to try out as an experiment if you find your coffee at home tastes a lot different from your local cafe, even if you're using the same beans and the same equipment. Okay, now for the recipe. The standard way of using an AeroPress involves putting a paper or a reusable metal filter in the filter holder, twisting it onto the chamber, placing them on a sturdy mug before then adding a splash of water to wet and clean the filter before discarding this liquid. Next, add the ground coffee and boiling water, Give it a stir and an optional top up of water if you like, before then inserting the plunger in the top. Push it down by about a centimetre or so. The plunger holds the liquid and stops any more from dripping into the mug, although there will be a little bit in there from that initial pour before you put in the plunger. In terms of quantities, the classic ratio is to use about 60 grams of coffee to about a litre of water, and you scale that down depending on how much uh, water you're going to be using in your final drink. But I just approximate this process in my recipe. I use the scoop that comes with the AeroPress, and I fill it to the brim with beans. Now, when I've weighed that, it normally works out between about 15 and 20 grams, depending on the size and density of those beans. And then I add the water until it reaches the top of the AeroPress. And in fact, what you end up with is a ratio that's not dissimilar to that classic recommended one. It certainly is fine for me as a starting point. You can adjust it later, but that's what I use to make a decent sized mug of coffee. Now you can fill it halfway or even less if you want a more intense drink, but I don't think the AeroPress works as well unless it's full. Remember, this is not a dedicated espresso machine, regardless of how it's sold or marketed by some shops. Experts may wish to perform the entire process on digital scales to ensure the amount of water you use is precise and repeatable, but this is a step too far for my home and travel brews. The one thing you should definitely do though is set a timer for the brewing period and start it the moment you begin pouring water into the chamber. Many pros suggest one minute in the chamber followed by a slow plunge of around 30 seconds, so that's a 90 second total brew time, but I prefer a slightly longer extraction, so I normally set my timer for just under two minutes before then taking the plunge. Then when the time's up, slowly push down on the plunger. It'll require some pressure, hence the need for a sturdy mug and a steady surface. And I also found it easier to lean on it with both hands or even both arms. When you can't plunge anymore, you can remove the AeroPress, untwist the filter holder, then pop out the puck of spent coffee with a quick push. This not only emerges with a satisfying pop, but it also composts pretty well. Now, there isn't one brew time that's perfect for all types of coffee. It varies with the beans, the roast, the grind, and your own taste, which of course can also vary day to day. Generally speaking, if your final drink is coming out a bit too sour, then it's under extracted and you probably need to give it a little bit more time, maybe 10 or 20 seconds longer in brewing. 
Conversely, if it's coming out a bit too bitter, then you probably over extracted it and you can improve that by reducing your brewing time again by about 10 or 20 seconds. Now do bear in mind that the grind size will also affect that sour to bitter scale. So my advice is to experiment with every new bag of beans that you buy. That sounds like a bit of a pain when all you want is a nice cup of coffee, but believe me, you'll get a feel for it. And generally on your second or third go, you'll be very, very close to an ideal for that particular bag. One of the next tricks to try is the inverted method. And that's normally what most cafes will do when they offer an AeroPress. I start by wetting the filter in the holder and also the end of the plunger for a more secure fit before inserting the plunger by about one centimeter into their empty chamber and turning them upside down. Next pour in your ground coffee followed by the boiling water before then very carefully twisting the filter holder into place. Be careful not to overfill the chamber or you're going to literally end up with a hot mess. Once the brew time is complete flip the AeroPress back round and on top of your mug before plunging. Now since none of the water could drip through before the plunge, you'll end up with all of the water brewing with all of the coffee, which coupled with the fixed chamber size will mean a shorter, more intense drink. I sometimes like to dilute mine with a splash of extra water if it's too strong. Now you may be skeptical, I know I was when I first heard about the inverted method, but believe me it really does produce a different tasting result. Note that I'm not going to describe it as a better result, it's different, you may prefer it, you may not. You may find that it works better with some beans and that the traditional method works with others. That's again the beauty of making coffee. You've got to experiment and try different techniques and adjust them to produce the results that you're after. But do proceed with caution with the inverted method because you are literally juggling a chamber of boiling liquid and that could end very, very badly. I'd only recommend doing it with a fairly young or new air press where the seal on the end of the plunger is still watertight with the chamber. If you've got an older model, you can replace that plunger though. There's lots of spare parts available. And also be very mindful when you are twisting on that filter cover. If you don't have it on tight enough, when you re-invert it uh, the proper way up, you can find it falls off. And again, that's not a good resort either, especially when all you want is a nice cup of coffee. But anyway, the technique is there if you want to give it a go. Perhaps with gloves first though, and no one else around. And that's how I brew coffee at home, as well as in hotels, on hikes, in trains, or by the side of the road. It's the same equipment and the same technique for all of them. Although on hikes or uneven terrain, I generally use the standard method rather than the inverted one. I hope you found some of that useful and I'd love to hear not just your own AeroPress recipes but also any shout outs you'd like to make to your own favourite roasters and what you love about them. If I've helped you in any way don't forget you can treat me to a coffee or treat yourself to my in-camera photography book or a Camera Labs mug. And if you're into cameras or photo tutorials please do check out my other videos. I'll see you next time. Thanks again for watching. Bye bye.